Fin fans, and welcome to the channel. Today I'm in my new setup, and I thought I'd have a quick look at this article that I thought was quite interesting. So I'm just going to share my screen now. Get the right set in. There we go. So we're going to meet some of the cyclists who ride the furthest and the longest from the comfort of their own homes. The words crazy, indoor, and cyclist were commonly found furnishing the same sentence, forming questions like, how does anyone sit on an indoor bike hour upon hour without once breaching the four walls of their garage or utility room? Because yeah, it's stationary. Duh. For those who were not yet bitten by the indoor cycling bug, it's tempting to assume that these cycling shuttings have had a screw come loose. I don't think it's tempting to assume that. And if someone's doing 45,000 miles in one sitting, it's not tempting. It's pretty much nailed on that they're a bit crazy. That much before, or some of the swift routes, that what it's all about. So back to the article. So we're going to, they spoke to a selection of riders, fanatical about indoor pedaling, and asked their methods as well as the motivation for their madness. So this guy here. One of the longest ever rides. Here he is. Dr. Alex Stryrin rides. I'm guessing that's not his real name. And it's too con coincidental that his name is Starve Rin Ides. <laughs> Sounds much to you like Strava rides. So I'm guessing it's maybe not his proper name, but who knows? Could be Greek. So he's this guy, Alex, Epic Swift Ride. And Nottingham-based Stravin Rides decided that 2,000 kilometres was well within the realms of, realms of his capabilities, but that 1,000-kilometre leap was going to take some committed training. I would do two hours Monday morning, five hours plus on Tuesday nights, Wednesdays I would have off, and Thursday and Friday mornings I'd do two hours, says Stravin Rides, of his build-up to the distance. The lion's share of his riding was at endurance pace, 210 to 220 watts, and he calculated when he began to plateau, having reached optimal fitness for the attempt. When I was able to comfortably ride four or five hours or 200 kilometres on a Tuesday evening, I knew I was making progress. And so he was on to the main event, which for which he took, undertook on the Pan Flat Tempus Fugit course in Swiss Watopia destroyed a virtual Pinareno Dogma F10. The bike, I personally think, makes little difference on the indoor train. I mean, I've got the uh, Tron bike, and I just don't change it now. I just use that bike. I don't mess around changing bikes and wheels and all that kind of thing. You're riding, you know, it, does it make a difference? I think it's all just in the head and visually, isn't it? Um, does it... I see loads of people on Swift who are just riding the, the original bike that they get and they're like level 40 and stuff. So I don't think the bike makes a difference personally. It's just all like visual. At the end of the day, it is a game, isn't it? So so his plan was to average 30 kilometers per hour. Sitting at a steady speed, he decided, would be the better barometer of the overall effect than wattage. From the outset, though, things didn't run to anywhere near as smoothly as Tempet Fuji's backdrop. The early stages, he says... The first 400 to 500 kilometres, I did throw up several times. The digestion wasn't sitting quite right. I had to adjust things to get that get that to work, he says. So the fueling strategy is something that he thought about and what did he eventually plump for? Stuff like fr fruit cocktails, salty rice, rice puddings work really well. So I kept that sort of stuff that worked and added the variety just to break it up. So spending a protracted period of time in the saddle, though, is bound to present problems, regardless of whether your diet is not as dialed in. It got to a certain point on the last morning when I realised that my saddle was hurting, he recalls with a grimace. I was convinced that the bolt had moved and the angle was wrong, but what actually happened was that through the riding, I'd lost soft tissue to the point that my sit bones were sitting completely different. He's doing 2,000 kilometres. Is he surprised? You know, you're going to lose muscle mass over that time, aren't you? Like two, what it's like almost 24 hours on the bike. He was thinking that that's the way he's thinking about it, watching every Star Wars film back to back, which you know, 
we we all know some of those films aren't great, especially the later ones. So that was you know that's kind of worthy of a, a medal in itself, no matter the the two thousand kilometers. So he says over the latter stages, he admits that sustaining the thousand a hundred watts just felt like death. Reaching and breaching the pain barrier, he called it at 8, 1,851 kilometres, beating Yasmin Muller's distance by 23 kilometres, but falling short of Chris Hopkinson's 2,500 kilometres, a real stormtrooper of a ride. So now we're moving on to another crazy, and this is the longest total time in Swift. Keith Roy of Auburn, New York, unassumingly became the first ever Swift rider to compete an entire year or 8,760 hours of rides on the platform. I started using Swift towards the end of 2016, says a 37 year old, and I immediately was hooked. I didn't set out to complete this milestone, it just sort of happened. I didn't realize I was going to surpass one year of ride time or be the first to accomplish it. A friend let me know. However, with rides include, including multiple double centuries over a couple of, and a couple of 300 mile plus indoor outings, this is kind of hard now in this article where they're swapping between kilometres and miles. This is a very British thing to do. Um, <laughs> I I am typically British in in that I record all my I I think of all my rides in miles, but all my climbing I think of in metres. So. In Britain, we can't pick a standard and, and the old the old system, and, and it's hard to get into that mindset of thinking kilometres. It, but climbing, I always think of metres. Weirdly enough, in my job, we're free to schedule our working hours as best suits. Says Roy, who is an integration specialist for a medical records company. So that allows us and me so much more time to ride. I'm usually on the turbo by 7 a.m. and I'll do as much as I can squeeze in. This year, he's averaged over 100 miles a day. That's just mental, in my opinion. 100 miles a day and swift. I mean, yeah, you see those guys out there. Personally, I'd rather ride outdoors, but, you know, sometimes circumstances don't allow that. So you you, you do. And maybe I've only been riding swift for like two years now. But it, it does really help with training and structure that just riding, riding, riding outside doesn't help. And obviously, I live in Britain, so the weather out in, especially where I live or in Britain in general, can be very hit and miss. So, continuing, his average weekly distance over the last month has been 825 miles with a stratospheric 101,215 feet of climbing. Again, they're swapping between miles and meters. And you know, earlier in the article, they're talking about kilometers now, and that was a British guy, and this American guy, they're talking about miles. So, just, I don't know why they just didn't pick one in this article, but you know, there we go. So, what has motivation been behind such an extreme approach to training? I've never run, ridden under the guise of a formal or structured training, I ride based off feel. I'm not a bike racer or an ultra cyclist. I'm just a guy who enjoys his bike riding, says Roy, who's formerly a gym junkie. No surprise there. He's obviously got to do as much activity as he can. I bet he was ripped when he was a gym, gym junkie. And now he's a cyclist. He's probably down to like 3% body fat or something ridiculous, especially if he's riding that many miles per day on Swift. Employee in Eddie Merckx, ride your bike, ride your bike, ride your bike ethos has today led Roy to the brink of a world record. I challenge myself to keep improving and I don't like to set short-term goals. Over enough time, this has led me to surpass 40,000 miles from my fifth year in a row. And now, a fun now with a functional outdoor bike, I will hopefully become the first cyclist to ever have passed 80,000 kilometres. Again, they're swapping between miles and kilometres or 50,000 miles and 4 million feet of climbing in a single calendar year. That's just some crazy, crazy riding. So here we go with another crazy. Hell of a week. Last December, John Walkley's aim was to ride a thigh throttling 40,000 kilometres. Again, this guy's British, but he's swapping between, we're swapping between miles and kilometres. In seven days, but what led the 45-year-old to embark on such an extreme cycling challenge? 
I wanted to show my son that if you keep pushing and working, you can eventually get through to the end. The primary reason was that my 13-year-old son, Edison, was diagnosed with a severe Crohn's disease last February and ended up spending a lot of time in hospital throughout the year, says Walkley. First of all, I wanted to try and raise money, a very admirable um, way of getting into it, I guess, for the local ch children's hospital that had been supporting him, just as a thank you. Undertaking such a ridey hope would also set an example and act as an inspiration to Edison. When I was thinking about the challenge, Wakely continues, I wanted to do something that, first of all, was big enough to attract some attention, and it was almost impossible, because I wanted to show my son that, even if things may seem impossible, keep pushing and keep working, keep trying, you'll eventually get through to the end. I needed it to be difficult. And difficult it certainly was. No one on Swift had ever written 40,000 kilometres in a single week. And I would say there's a very good reason for that. It's completely bonkers. And it was never going to be an easy pedal, particularly given the unrelenting nature of the challenge. My plan was to try and do three or four hours at a time. Change my bib shorts, have a quick shower, jump back on within 20 minutes and sleep when I could. Having reached the halfway point in reasonable shape, Wakely then started to experience ride compromising issues, unsurprisingly. When I got to the fifth day, both my Achilles tendons flares up. I heard an out, woke up and both legs were very bruised and swollen. This is basically because you're not designed to do this kind of crazy riding. I couldn't stand. I spent a good seven hours elevating and icing, trying to get the swelling down. The support Walkley got and he received during his effort inspired him to lift the lid on hitherto explored levels of suffering. That's the big thing about Swift, he says. When you're doing challenges, even though it might be a solo challenge, you're all surrounded by people, whether it's through messaging you on Discord or people coming in and riding. You're never actually alone. With his Achilles issues limiting his power output, Again, unsurprisingly, he's done. He's trying to do 4,000 kilometres in a week. Walkley had to reframe the ride. 4,000 kilometres was now off the table. Shock. But his bloody-minded determination saw him complete seven days of riding and an incredible 3,334.2 kilometres. Not quite a record, but an outstanding achievement. Nonetheless, chapeau, Mr Walkley. Yeah, like I say, the, the human body isn't designed for this kind of intense, crazy training. I mean, look look at the distance that the, the you see behind me. I've got some Tour de France highlights. Look at the distance they do over 21 days with, with or 21 stages, 23 days with two rest days. You know, you, you're trying to do this kind of distance. It, it's just crazy. I, I, I get, get this guy's doing it for charity, and that's amazing. But you you have to think about what kind this kind of crazy riding is going to do to your body. Um, there's a challenge that I don't know if anybody of you guys out there have heard about it, uh, but you've definitely heard about uh, the guy, and that is David Goggins, and he does a a challenge over 48 hours where every hour, sorry, every four hours you've got to run four miles. Now, I tried this challenge over Easter, not last year, the year before. I've been doing a lot of running up to that point. Uh, probably, well, when I say a lot, for me, it was a lot. 20 miles a week, 24 miles a week. Um, and I really wanted to do this challenge. And it, the week leading up, I started to get a really, my left ankle started to be, the just because it was activity I wasn't used to doing, it started to swell a bit. So, I thought, I, I can just run through it. So we got to the start, midnight on the Friday, did my four hours, I did my four miles. Four hours later, again, four miles. Four hours later, again, four miles. Four hours later, again, four miles. In that time, because I was just doing constant activity that I'd never done before, my muscles and, and my my ankle muscles started to swell and I just, I was getting to the point where I couldn't walk. And I got, again, my body wasn't, it just wasn't designed for that kind of sustained effort. I, I, I'd go out and that, that year I was doing a lot of riding on my bike. So 
I could go out and ride 100 miles. I wouldn't have no issues, no injuries, no sore muscles, nothing, because I was used to that kind of activity. But when you're jumping in and trying to do this kind of activity, these kind of challenges from nothing, you've got to really build up to it slowly. You can't just jump in out out of the blue and think, I'm going to ride 100 miles tomorrow when you've only been doing 10 miles a week. You can't jump in and go, I'm going to do 4,000 kilometers on Swift this week. Even if you've got kind of training up to it, you're not going to be prepared for that that kind of intense body efforts. And going back to my run, which we've just been discussing, I got to 24 hours. I did, I did 24, 24 hours of four miles, and I couldn't. I went out for the. I, I went out to try and do the the one after 24 hours where it would have been 28 hours. I couldn't walk. I got, I got to the end of the street and I had to turn around and I knew then I had to call it. And there wasn't no shame in that. I just, I, I couldn't physically do it. I wanted to do it. My mind was willing, but I couldn't, I couldn't physically do it. And I think that that's what a lot of these people don't think about when they're trying these kind of extreme activities. Now I think an Everest is totally different to trying to do 4,000 kilometers in a week that you can train for you're talking maybe a day's activity a lot of people can do it within 12 13 15 hours um and again you can get off and get on when you want but i think that that's doable but trying to do four thousand kilometers in a week that that's just crazy crazy kind of goals and i think a lot of swifters do try and take it to the extreme so anyway, that, that's my take on this article. Everyone, everyone out there, keep riding your bikes. Hope you find some enjoyment out of this video. Hope the sound is a lot better than some of my previous videos. Uh, I might plan and try and do another history of. Now I've got better equipment to use. So until then, bye everyone.